Welcome, and uh, here I am today uh, in my, my new episode of uh, Maestros of Music. And of course, um, the important thing, apart from playing the guitar or, or an instrument, is, is uh, to, to actually uh, have an instrument to play on. And um, today I'm joined by Christopher Dean, guitar maker, a uh, very good friend, uh, old friend. We, well, we've been friends for a very long time, in fact. And, um, but I wanted today to, to, uh, to introduce you to, to Christopher Dean, those, those who, who don't, know, uh, don't know you, Chris, and um, to, for you to explain to, to us today a bit about your guitars and how you make things. So, uh, so anyway, it's welcome. And um, I'd like you to introduce uh, yourself and tell us uh, a little bit about yourself, your background, how you started maybe, um, and where you started. And, Sure, sure, sure. Well, I'll, I'll introduce myself. I'm Christopher Dean. Uh, <laughs> Welcome. Um, I'm here in my workshop in Kingham in Oxfordshire in, in the Cotswolds, uh, which is a very beautiful part of um, England. And um, I've been in these workshops uh, since 1985. Wow. That's a long time. I mean, 30 something years. Um, prior to that, I was working with Paul Fisher, who um, had his own workshop in Chippy Norton. Yes. So um, came to work for him in, I think, 1982. Right. And prior to that, I was at London College of Furniture <clears throat> doing um, the course in musical instrument technology. Wow. And prior to that, I was just dabbling at making my own guitars. And in fact, I, I, in fact, I, I, uh, I, as we were saying the other day, actually, we, we can't quite remember how we met or when we met, in fact, but, but um, probably through a friend, uh, probably through Gerald Garcia, actually, but, but, but I, I'm not sure, I can't remember exactly, but, but I do remember... <laughs> but I do remember um, going to your old workshop, in fact, which is not the one you're in now. It's the same place, but I think it was around the corner. Um, yeah. so, so that's probably, you know, that will tell you roughly how long I've known you for. But, um, but anyways, how, so, <laughs> so you set up as a, as a guitar maker, ind independent guitar maker, um, as Christopher Dean Guitars. Uh, yeah. when, when, in the 80s was that? Or? Yeah, that was in 1985. Uh, I've been with Paul Fisher for two and a half years. And then... Um, it was sort of uh, by mutual agreement. I wanted to go and make my own guitars. I had my own ideas, things that I wanted to do. Um, I think there was a recession at the time, you know, so the, the orders had slightly dropped off because we, he had a huge number of orders at that time. And, right. and so many so that he was making a second tranche of guitars, which is where I came in, studio guitars. Um, so I, I started making in a sort of, in a recession or the, the tail end of a recession, but it was fine. I, I, I managed to get through it. Um, so yeah, for those... For those of you who don't know, of course, Paul Fisher is, is another um, well-known uh, English or British uh, uh, guitar maker. Um, so do you remember, in fact, uh, um, your first ever guitar and, and uh, what, I mean, was it based on anything or was it your own, you know, your own revolutionary, revolutionary model to start off with or, or do you copy, I don't know, a Torres or, or something? I do remember them. No, I, I, um, no, it wasn't a copy of anything. I, I wanted to do things a little bit differently to, to Paul. You know, I mean, he'd make great guitars, but I wanted to, I had my own ideas. And I do remember the first two guitars because I, I, <clears throat> I, I, I didn't have anybody to sell them to at that time. So um, I can remember traipsing um, down to London, uh, yeah, to London and, um, um, showing them to Ivor Morantz. Oh, um, yes, he met him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he was there, um, and he was impressed enough to buy one. So oh, that was fantastic. Um, and then I went down to the Spanish Guitar Centre in Bristol, <clears throat> where the lovely Chris Gilbert, um, mm -hmm. who sat no longer with us, um, looked at them and really liked them and, and ordered a couple. So, um, you know, that was the start of it. Great. Um, yeah, so, yeah. so mainly you are um, you are a, a classical guitar maker. Uh, that's your main uh, business. But but um but I I do know you make other other guitars as well. Um, I know I know you've done a is it one flamenco or two flamencos? I can't remember. I, I've done a few. I've or done a few, few, yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe a handful over, over the years, but not not that many. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I'm still waiting for you to make one. Make one for I'm me. still waiting for the order. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Anyways, we'll talk about that later. Uh, but uh, talking of, uh, of course, of guitars and guitar making, um, what I'd like you to say is, is kind of, or to show us, in fact, is to, uh, to show us um, one of your guitars, maybe if you have one that you're working on at the moment, and yeah. um, to explain to us um, how, how the guitar is made. I mean, I know, obviously, I can see one on, on, on your right hand side that's kind of all, already made, but uh, if you can tell our, our, our listeners, our viewers, um, kind of, yeah. if possible, a step-by-step -step kind of uh, 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 way of, of um, making a guitar. I don't know if you have the old pieces, even if it's not, you know. Uh, well, I'm, I'll, I'll have to go and get them. I don't know if you want me to rummage around, but <laughs> I, I haven't got, um, I, I haven't got the bits and pieces. But let me just go and get a soundboard. Uh, yes. and I'll, I'll, I'll do, you know, a soundboard, then a joined up soundboard and a rosette and one or two bits and pieces like that. I'll be 10 seconds. Hang on. Right. <laughs> it's nothing like uh, being well prepared as we are. But um, if you want, more, by the way, more information on, uh, on uh, Christopher Dean and his guitars, um, I will be putting up at the end of the uh, interview I'll be putting up his links of his website and how you can contact him and uh, and to see also um, things you know things that he's done but also who plays his guitars and all these things that we will be discussing in a couple of minutes but um, ah, he's back so there you are I'm back with the first uh, bit of this um, the wood I buy I mean, th now this this is the uh, the soundboard wood um, which has come from um, where do we go for that? To, um, Italy, northern Italy. Right. Um, I, I had a lovely trip with a, um, a German guitar maker, Andreas Kirchner, good friend of mine. Um, and we go and rummage through this. I mean, and this is spruce. This is um, Christmas tree wood, really. I, I, exactly, because yeah, most, most people won't know what a guitar piece of wood looks like uh, and um and in fact they're probably surprised to see that it's a rectangle as opposed to already kind of <laughs> yeah. pre-made as it were so yeah. so you buy them uh, i mean obviously well, i know but but you you buy them in 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 slabs or i don't know what you'd uh when we buy them from from a specialist um supplier in, in that form you know so then what there is there's two pieces uh, and it's been sort of cut through that way so that when you open it up what one piece mirrors the other yeah, uh, uh, and, and what you're looking for is very slow-growing wood. Um, so, so you know, from an old tree that grows has harsh conditions, so it grows slowly. So the the the, the lines, uh, the the growth the lines grows yeah. together. Yeah, it's got to be cut in the right way, and it's got a sound. I mean, I, I don't know if it will come across, but but I'll listen to it, and it has to have a musical sound to it. Um, which that does <clears throat> so that's um, and then we've got to keep that uh, we've got to store it for I don't know that what's this one um, this one was cut in um, 2012 okay so that's eight years old right so that was a question I was going to ask you about how you choose a piece of wood I mean obviously over the years I've seen many guitars and uh, I'm not an expert in wood, but I but I know a little bit about it. And um, the the fact that you tap them, I've I've seen obviously in many guitar makers, and and um, and I've always asked that question: is how do you choose a piece of wood, and how do you know? I mean, of course, there's a there's an element of not knowing, <laughs> but but you, it's kind of part intuition and part experience, I presume presume. Um, and by and by, as you just did by tapping the wood, um, there's a certain resonance that that obviously we can't hear through the through the microphone, but. Um, yeah. Is it? The, I mean, is, how could you explain that? Is it just experience? And... I mean, it's it's not just uh, the the sound of the wood. It's the look of the wood. It's the stiffness of it. Sometimes you can just scratch it, and and the right note comes off somehow. It's uh, it's just something you gain with instinct. Um, there's also another. Uh, thing that you look at which are the medullary rays and I you know you, I doubt you're going to be able to see it but this is quite good I mean, well, basically you've got the your growth lines going that way but then you get these silky rays going across the wood which is a sign that you've got great stiffness and I suppose musicality it's a good right. sign for a, for a, a soundboard 
Right. So, I mean, that would be interesting. That would be interesting. I mean, I, I, perhaps there are even people who, who would watch this, who are going to watch this, um, who might be beginners or even want to try and make a guitar. So uh, yeah. <laughs> it's difficult to, to, you know, to say to them how to, or to me, in fact, I'd love to make a guitar one day, in fact, but um, to how to choose a piece of wood, obviously you wouldn't go for the most expensive one to start off with, but, but, um, but it's interesting to give people tips and pointers as to uh, where to go with it. Um, and also to see how, how difficult it is and how, how much experience in fact you need. It's not a simple thing just to build an instrument like that. I mean, I know you see them in the shop and they think, oh, they look lovely, but it's a lot more, <laughs> a lot more, uh, you know, in it than just uh, looking at, oh, that looks nice and I'll buy it. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there is. And I mean, it, and it's not just picking one piece of wood because I mean, what mm. happens when in the workshop when I come to make a guitar for a particular customer who wants a particular sound, <clears throat> there'll be, wood everywhere because I, I then have to sort of find the right top yeah. and I have, yeah. have to find the right back and sides to go with it and um, sometimes it just drives me mad but <laughs> I know in there somewhere is is the right or the nearest the best combination that I can make to try and achieve that the sound that I want um, through that so um, it, it, it can be maddening for me sometimes but it's always it's always satisfying it's always good you know you get there in the end so, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, sorry, yeah. No, no, so, so, you know, and then and then I, and then I join the, the the two sides up. Right. Um, so yeah, you've got a a sensor line there which you, which is glued, um, and that basically is your soundboard. Yeah. Which you, you then work down to the thicknesses that you want. Um, again, depending on the quality of the wood, um, and the the sound you're trying to achieve. Yeah, but well, of course I must. I must say. Uh, I mean, of course everyone knows really. But but um, I must say, just in case, is that all these the guitars that you make, in fact, are uh, um, are all made by hand, and that's that's the beauty of it. Is that actually uh, over the years, of course, you get to learn and judge <laughs> all the measurements. I mean, of course, for you, it's almost semi-automatic, I presume. But but to like me to play the guitar, but but it's yeah. it's very difficult to 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 reach that kind of. Uh, that personal touch, I presume, and uh, that, that's that's the thing I like about it. Is the is yeah. one, in fact seeing your guitars once they're finished, they just look so beautiful anyway. But they also sound beautiful, even though, of course, I still, as I said before, haven't had one of your guitars yet. But uh, uh, <laughs> one day. But but um, so okay. So you so so you fold them together, uh, and those are the mirror mirror pieces. Um, yeah. And then of course the side and the back uh, are made of a different wood, of course. Um, and what do you yeah. what do you generally use as a as a wood, or do you just um, I use um, either Indian or Brazilian rosewood. Um, right. Um, I won't get, I, I'll show you some, uh, the, the finished article. Yeah. Like on. Because uh, of course, in fact, what just before you do, in fact, uh, you said Indian or Brazilian. Um, in fact, uh, as 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 you know as well as as I do, Brazilian uh, rosewood is is quite rare. Well, that was more than rare. You're not allowed to um to 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 buy or deal in it unless it's a certain uh, certification. I think is that correct? Well, yes, yes. It, it's it's um it comes under the CITES uh, appendix one, uh, which is which is the the, the rarest, which, yeah. which is includes. I, I don't know. So, well, I, you know, elephant ivory, which, which yes, yeah, yeah. Um, but but it, it you know it is rare. So you for each piece that I use, I have to have a certificate. Exactly. Yeah. That's been um, uh, given to me, and and then I have to sort of register that when I sell it, and, mm. and so forth. So it's very rare. It's it's sort of commercially extinct now. Yes. Um, but I've been very fortunate in that. In the early days, um, I, I I bought a lot. You know, I, I was offered a lot, and I, and I sort of stretched myself financially, and I I, I bought it. So I've still got them of that. Which Wonderful. Is Wonderful. Yeah, because uh, yeah. it's, it's I love Brazilian uh, rosewood. But anyways, yeah, you have a guitar there uh, on okay. your on your side there. Here's one. I just tilt that round, and yeah. um, you could probably see yes see it. Um, Beautiful. Yeah, too much reflection. Um, the back and the sides sort of match quite nicely. And um, see, it's got these these lovely sort of black yeah, uh, dark, dark gum lines, you know, that, that go through it, which which is t typical, uh, really, of Brazilian rose. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. That that's on the finished article, um, and uh, yeah, that's. Um, um, and, and those, are, of course, uh, uh, they're all um, French polished, aren't they? That's all French polish, yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm just about to. Now, this actually, I mean, we might come on to it, but I mean, this is a copy of a, 
of a Madrid maker, um, Santos Fernandez. Right, um, who's from what year? From, um, this would be sort of something about 1912 or some, some, something around that, that era. I, I don't do exact copies. Right, I mean, that was my question. I have done, I have done but I, I try and sort of, um, I wouldn't be sort of arrogant enough to think that I can copy um, <clears throat> a maker like Santos Hernandez. I can do something in his style. Right. Um, and that's really, and, and try and achieve that, that particular sound, which I guess you're familiar with, you know, yeah. that, that great sort of old fashioned, warm, um, romantic, um, Spanish, Spanish sound. So yeah, I think, I'm, I think I may have seen one a, a couple of years ago at your, at your workshop, in fact. Um, I think you had one. Uh, yeah, I've made a few. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, yeah. yeah anyways, yeah. Um, so, uh, so, okay, so another question, for example, uh, for um, people who, who are aficionados of the, of the guitar and also aficionados who like making guitars, for that matter. Um, I know some, well, in the old days, um, guitar makers used to have their own secrets, as it were, and you, you may still have your own secrets, I don't know, but, um, but uh, of actually what's underneath the, uh, the soundboard, because, of course, on, on the back and sides of the guitar, usually there isn't really that, that much, just, you know, bits and bobs that are holding it together. Um, you can explain that in technical terms if you like, but, but underneath the... Uh, the soundboard, um, everyone has their, their own particular um, design, if you like. Uh, it used to be the call, the call, of course, the fan bracing, but uh, yeah. maybe you could explain a little bit about how that becomes, or, or not, your, your, um, your kind of uh, personality, your identity, if you like, on a, on a guitar. I mean, uh, we can have, as a musician, we can have our own identity or try to make our own identity with our music, but you yeah. kind of, presumably, it's underneath the soundboard, which is the, the, where you have a bit more uh, freedom to, to give your voice, if you like. Well, yes, yes. I mean, it, 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 that aside, I mean, what really what you're trying to do is, is, um, is, is stop the blooming thing from collapsing. You know, right. when you put the strings on, let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's take the romance out of it. You know, <laughs> it's got to work. It's got yeah. to work as a functioning instrument. And um, if you've got a top, I mean, this top, you know, the, these, these particular guitars, <laughs> were Santos Hernandez um, made them very thick, you know, so I, um, I've got a copy of a Hauser that I've done, and, and there the top is about two and a half millimeters thick, which is not thick, but it's mm. relatively thick for a, a, a guitar. These go down to about 1.7, 1.8 wow. wow. millimeters. So, so, that's that's really, so really the tension thick. is massive for people who don't really understand. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if you just put, put the strings, you've got about, a, I think, 90 pounds of pressure when you put the strings on. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to be able to resist that. So you put braces in, um, what they call fan braces, which go yeah. under, the, uh, uh, under the bridge and they resist the torque of the uh, bridge. Um, but at the same time, that sort of disciplines the top uh, and turns it into more of a uh, um, if you like a piston, you know, so that mm. the top is going is working that way, um, and you've got to find the right balance between um, so keeping it light and stiff, which depends on your materials mm. and and the way you work it, the, the amount of wood you take off, um, and keeping enough resistance to not let the thing collapse in on itself and, and lose all of its sound. So right. that's the balance, you know, you've got to, you've got to get that bit right. And um, they, they're not, it's not so much the, um, that it's the guitar maker's secret, because there, you know, there are sort of, there are drawings of all sorts of guitars and they tell you what the, what the uh, dimensions are of these things, but it's the, it's your experience, it's you yes, getting yes. to feel it and you tap it and you flex it and you try and somehow sort of see the sound. Somehow. Yes, yes, you, yeah, yeah. You feel it more, you know, as a musician, you know what I mean. You know, you feel it more than just notes. You know, mm. you feel it as something else. You feel it as a whole. Mm. Something that you want to sort of uh, work to move people somehow. So that's... That's where, you know, so the secret's not in there, it's in these. <laughs> ah, yeah. I have to say, by the way, I, I have to say, by the way, that, that your guitars are some, or one or some of the most beautiful I've ever seen. And, and not because you're my friend, but, but because they are. They're very, very beautiful guitars. Um, and, and talking of which, actually, um, I, they sound 
excellent too, but they are very beautiful to look at too on, on, on both sides. But talking mm -hmm. of which, now you're holding the guitar, um, yeah. your rosettes that, that, that you make also, that's something that I love. And I, I think that's again, a, a bit of an ID in a sense of uh, you have your own identity in your rosette. And, and again, that, yeah. that's, uh, that's where you can be creative and, and make your own designs and, uh, and, and sets you apart, uh, not only the rosette, but in fact, the, the head, which we can't see at the moment, but the headstock. But um, so yeah. uh, how do you, uh, I mean, do you have a little rosette there you have uh, to hand so they yeah. can see? Well, I've got, um, yeah, let me have a look. I've got, uh, yeah, I've got one. Um, oh, I, I don't know how that shows. Is, it, is that clear enough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. I mean, that's that's the sort of uh, one in the, oops. <laughs> uh, I, I, it's a reject, actually, but I mean, it basically gives you the... Gives uh, you, uh, and so for someone who's never seen that before, I mean, it could look, if, to, yeah. to, to a non-pro, non it looks like a sticker, but it's, of course, it's not a sticker. So how, no. how would you, so how would you, how would you make one of those? Do you have, I mean, do you, I, I know in your workshop, you occasionally yeah, have yeah. bits and bobs there. So um, have you got little strands of things you can show them just very basically how it's made? Give me two seconds, I'll get something. <laughs> okay. You see, it's a, <laughs> this is definitely live and improvised because um, uh, we hadn't prepared this. So uh, anyways, he has some, some nice bits of, um, of wood. Well, he'll explain to you how, how you do this. But uh, for me, it's one of the most beautiful things of a guitar and of his guitars. And um, in, oh, there you are. So we, we'll find out very quickly how this works. Exactly. So, yeah. There's not exactly the thing I want to show you, but there, there are some, basically, when, where you have the, the pattern repeating itself, um, or, or here's another one, which I think is the one I'm going to show you the, right. the, the tiles of. The, yeah. the middle of the pattern um, is made up of little, oh no, sorry, it's another one. Um, they, and they may be too small to see. I know, that's good, yeah, we can, we can see they're, them, yeah. They're, they're little tiles. Yeah, um, it's like mosaics, isn't it? little, little mosaics. Little, yeah, yeah, but basically what you do is where you see the pattern there, if you know what a stick of rock is like, you know, where you've got the, the pattern going right the way through a long um, piece of wood, you make that from, from veneers in your own particular way, um, and then you slice it up. So yeah. you've got a piece of the pattern going all the way through, <clears throat> and then you've got a sort of a circular form, um, and then you've got various um, pieces, uh, some of which are herringbone, you know, they're, they're, they're sort of more elaborate than just rings. Yeah. Uh, they go around that and then your little tiles, you, you put it, you piece them in. Um, uh, and you stick that together with what, some just glue or? or... Uh, with glue, yeah, with, with, with hot glue, you yeah. know, um, animal glue. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's how that's, that's made. I mean, it's, um, um, it's tricky, but uh, I, again, I've been doing it a long time, and um, I, I, I've got it down to something of fine art, and I, I can sort of just enjoy it because it doesn't go on. Yes, yes. To get yeah. a nice result. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and, and that takes me on going on with the, the idea of identity and how I would recognise a Christopher Dean guitar or mm. a, or a Santa Fernanda for that matter. Uh, um, with a Christopher Dean guitar, with your guitar, um, what about, because I, I remember when I was a kid, I used to think, oh, I, you know, I used to look at players and see what guitars they were playing, because I wanted to know, uh, uh, you know, what, well, what the best guitars are in that sense. And also, if I liked the sound of it, I wanted to know what it was. And um, for, so for a guitarist, for example, I would look at the, the headstock, the head, you can see my guitars behind and all the rest of it. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, but um, with your guitar, for example, what, what is it, have you got a, uh, a, a design that is always the same, or do you have two designs, or how? Uh, yeah. Or would you change all the time? I mean, would you have an ID and that's identity? And I keep talking about identity, yeah. but, but uh, you must have your own design, in other words. I'll, I'll show you. I'll bring one down. Yeah. Um, this is a, another one I, I strung up this morning. So um, that, uh, I don't know if, how well you can see it, but th that, that's, that's my head design. That's it. That's said. nice. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Um, I've had, you know, I've made one or two variations of it and I've refined it a bit over the years. It's not spectacular, but to me, it sort of works, you know. I, is, there I, an ins I, is there an inspiration behind that? There's, oh, um, um, it's yeah. like a flower almost. It's, uh, it's very pretty. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, not really. I, I remember originally um, looking at, of all things, a gun stock, you know, uh, of, oh, yeah. a, uh, of a, um, a pattern on a gun stock. And I thought, okay, I'll take those curves. 
Um, I, I wanted a romantic story, uh, Chris. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I didn't. I didn't want to. You know, I wanted something that was um, somehow British, and I and I sort of saw this. I was flicking through a thing on it, and it was a company in Birmingham, and I thought, well, actually, I can start with that um, yeah. and work on it from from there. I mean, originally it was. You know, I look at it now. At, at my original ones back in the eighties, and they were sort of quite crude they, they would just sort of came up to a point so over the years I've refined it um, and made it my own so if you see that um, unless somebody else has nicked the idea you know <laughs> that, that's uniquely my my design yeah. my, my head design yeah if you could sit down with your guitar because I want to ask you a couple of questions about that as well so we can see you too but um because um, I, I, I like the idea of having your own Kind of personality on the on the, on the head. Uh, I don't know. It's just one of my things. But um, yeah, I, actually, another thing is. Uh, I mean, I, I think everyone does. Everyone buy because you don't make mach the machine heads your, yourself, obviously. No, no, the tuners. I'll show you the tuners. These are made by um, uh, Rogers. Yeah. Um, David Rogers, who was in yeah. in Leicester, and then by his son Rob, who's now moved to Canada. Right. And they're absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, they are. Yeah. They're, they're a work of art in themselves. In fact. Yeah, yeah, and and not only that. Not only do they look beautiful, but they they work yeah. absolutely to perfection. Professionals have said, you know, if they need to go up or down a semitone or whatever, they know where they can turn that knob right. to, and, yeah, yeah. and it will, um, uh, it'll, it'll go there and stay there. Yeah. So yeah, they're gorgeous. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. So so uh, so other beautiful things about the guitar, and, and other interesting things about the guitar for, for, for people who, who don't know is um the actual the nut and the saddle and all these kind of things that uh, uh that, that are included in the guitar, obviously uh, where the strings sit, and of course they're made out of uh, of this. They're yeah. not, they're not made out of plastic as they see in the shops. <laughs> oh no, not made out of plastic. No. No, no, I know that, but, <laughs> but, but uh, so tell us, because tell, tell tell it's an important part of the guitar, I think. For, I mean, I'm, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm, I want people to learn about the construction of the guitar as well. And um, mm -hmm. of course, I know a fair amount about it, but, but I'd like you to explain what, you know, what the use and, and what they're made out of and, and, and how important they are to the. Yes, guitar, yes. I okay. Well, I mean, if you take the saddle, for instance, um, <clears throat> I, I use, I have to use quite a sort of wide saddle in that direction because each string has a, a different thickness and therefore um, it, it has a different length. So I step some of the strings back a little bit, some mm -hmm. further forward, um, and that gives you better intonation. Can, you, can um, we see that on the camera? Sorry to interrupt you, Chris, because uh, I'm, I'm not sure if, because uh, it's a question that lots of, that's it, yeah, you can just about yeah. see, yeah. The, the third string there mm -hmm. has gone back uh, about <clears throat> I don't know what half a millimeter to the fourth because it's a very f big fat string and the fourth is a thin one. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, guitar intonation is always something of a compromise. Yes. Uh, because you you've got the pressure you've got pressure down on this on the string so you every time you, um, you you're stretching the string every time you you finger it. You know? You're not doing that with the piano. You're just hitting the correct the, yeah no um so, and so the importance of that sa a, a saddle is um obviously um, what it's made of but 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 uh, but also what what effect does that have on the on the note or on the sound yeah well that i mean that has to sort of that's where you're transmitting the, your sound you know it's going down through there so <clears throat> there are all sorts of things that are important that the, the strings have to sit properly on it you have to have the right break angle the the, the angle where it leaves the this end block and then goes up onto the yeah. uh, saddle to give you the right tension, um, and um, and it has to sit snugly, very snugly, in the the slot that you've made for it in the bridge, yeah. um, so that you're not you've got no extraneous rattles or anything. Yeah, you know, it, I mean this is something over over the many years obviously that I've been playing and, and teaching um, mm -hmm. is when people ask me for a guitar and I mean especially kind of beginners to, to intermediates um, you know they, they don't actually realize at the beginning how important the saddle is uh, and, and they're not for that matter or, or you know all, all in all but but the saddle is really really important and not only that but the setup of the saddle is is uh, is really important and that's something again that people don't really realize 
um, until until they become advanced players or, or professionals, mm -hmm. obviously. But but um, and so I was I was I had to rack my brains and, and yours and everyone else's that you know the the, the the action on on between the strings and the soundboard. Uh, and how how high or how low, and of course that depends on the on not only on the construction of of each guitar, but what you're going to play on the guitar, whether it's classical, flamenco, or whatever. And perhaps yeah. you could um, give us a kind of a guide on on, on that, in fact, because it's something well, yeah. I get asked a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, you as a flamenco player, you know, you'll have a much lower action. You know, so I mean, you, you're you're moving fast, um, uh, but then that will create rattles. Um, yeah. You know, when you have buzzes which uh, have become part of your music. Yes, they? we like it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wish everyone did. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Make life easier. <laughs> but they don't. So, I mean, you know, you, you're looking for a much purer note. Um, um, you, you don't want it to you can get any notes rattled, but, yeah. um, um, but you, don't, you don't want that. You want consistently no. so that each note doesn't rattle. So the whole setup is quite, you have to be quite precise, you know, your frets yeah. will have to be level, but they're not absolutely straight, you know, because you, you've got, you, your string is sort of doing uh, that. So yeah. your fingerboard somehow has to conform as close as it can to that curve. Yeah, for people who don't understand that, because what happens is when, when you when you write and say the string does like this, is that actually it, sometimes if the setup is not right, it hits the fret and that's where the buzz yeah. comes from. That's right. Yeah, they hit the fret and they're normally about halfway up, you know, because that's yeah. where the maximum excursion of the string will be. Mm. Um, and that, that's where you'll you'll start to rattle. So uh, so classical guitars have relatively high action mm. uh, and a particular technique to, to um, prevent uh, too much um, buzzing or, or, or prevent it altogether you know when when you're playing so it's um it's it's very precise you know you've got to have the strings close enough to the fingerboard so that it's easy to play mm. but not too high um, um, but not too low so it, it, Sorry, it's got to be sort of easy to play, but, but you know, you've got to be able to allow enough space mm. for the string to vibrate without. Yeah. So it's, you, you, you've got to, um, you've got to be very careful. And really yeah. Quite cross about and, and, and of course, us, us uh, guitarists um, are very easy to get on with when we come to see you and, and uh, we ask you for things and set up because uh, <laughs> actually we're an absolute nightmare because of course everyone wants a different thing and it's a, it, it, I'm always told, no, you can't do yes, you can, and it's a complete, we're, we're a nightmare when it comes to set up the guitars. I know. Well, yeah, no, what, I, <laughs> what I can't help, sometimes I go into cold sweat when somebody has, has got a, <laughs> And they've had a buzz somewhere, <clears throat> and you've done everything you can to eliminate that buzz. But if you hit it loud enough, it'll still buzz. Yes, you know? of course, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it just stays with some people. So I, 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 I do my best to. Well, that's the thing with, with flamenco, of course. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, we we can just hit it. And, you know, it's hard to. And it just buzzes anyway. So uh, so <laughs> so we're okay. <laughs> but um, but yeah. So so um. And of course, the the, the, the fretboard is uh, ebony, and yeah, uh, yeah. and um, yeah, and, and so anyways, that, so can you actually can you? I don't know if you can. But the thing is, the sound quality is not great. To be fair, on, on I'll just I'll, I'll try. But the only thing is, I've just put the strings on. So. Oh. Oh, nice. Even through Zoom, that sounds nice. There you go. So that's that's just the day old. That, that, that sound will change. Oh yes, a few days. So that's quite important because um, if you can imagine, you know, you've made the guitar like this one that I've shown you. I mean, that's never seen strings before. Mm. So you can imagine that you, the way I've described the soundboard. If you then put, suddenly put strings and you tighten them up, yeah, there's a lot of tension that needs to come out of yeah. that. And so. It's quite lovely to watch because over the next few days, um, you'll hear a change in, yeah. the, in the sound. You, you'll you'll have some sort of some fairly sort of wild overtones that, that come through, and then they will 
they will diminish. Yeah. Um, you know, there will always be overtones because every every note has overtones to it. Yeah. Um, but the, the there'll be a sort of a rounding out and, and an, an evening out of. of of the sound. Yeah, and that's something I, I well, I've always noticed over the years, uh, and um, is, and it's very important also to um, to to make sure as as a guitarist is is if you hit it too hard, even as a flamenco player, if you hit it too hard, it drowns. I I, I find from my own experience, from my own experience, if you hit too hard, uh, not that I have, but but uh, I've heard players, and it drowns the guitar, and then I think the, I feel that the guitar can't give out as much sound as it as it wants to and uh, and whereas if you if you play it um if you caress the guitar if you like um whether you're a classical or flamenco player it actually for me the sound becomes much more beautiful and you have to be delicate with an instrument in, in a sense mm -hmm. i'm not too delicate but and it, it creates its own you know its own warmth its own shape if you like and, and gradually builds and builds and builds um so yeah. I, I i absolutely i agree with that it does change the sound changes a lot in fact yeah. from, from beginning to you know months and years later uh, which yeah. is a nice thing um, yeah. Talking of which, anyway, so, uh, with uh, with guitars uh, um, of your guitars, uh, you have. I don't know if the ones behind you are are they kind of similar models or are they different models that you're doing at the moment. No, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little tour. Um, yeah, if I can. Good. Uh, By the way, I usually, I usually have a cup of tea or coffee when I'm at your workshop, so uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm missing it today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bless. Um, okay, look, I'll, um, I'll just show you. I mean, this now this one at the front here is um, um, a copy of a, a Hauser guitar, or, or it's based on a Hauser guitar, roughly f one that was made around 1943. Okay, perfect. Um, so that has a thicker top than the Santos Hernandez, which I showed you. Um, <clears throat> it's, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's that sort of sound that, um, I mean, Julian Bream used to play, uh, Segovia right. played on a Hauser. Um, and you try and reproduce that quality of sound. Um, and, and, and what what is, what is the what is the characteristics uh, or what are the characteristics of that design or that that that, um, that guitar? Is it kind well, of a big sound, kind of very bright, or is it? What, what yeah, kind of... I'll just put this down. I'll try and I'll try and demonstrate that. Um, yeah. I mean, again, it's very very new, but it's got um, it's got the sort of quality that I was looking for. Because it's got this very big expansive bass. I don't yeah. know if you can hear that. I, I, I can, but then again, I, I kind of know what it sounds like in a way, so I'm, I'm hearing it anyway. I love it. <laughs> and then, and then um, house guitars very often have a sort of, quite a sort of I'm gonna say a very pure um, treble, a very, very quite thick. Sorry, my, is, my yeah. Yeah. I know that's not coming through very well, but but that that's the sort of sound that I'm looking for. Um, it's quite disciplined. It's quite. Um, um, but very, but, but very pure. There's a lot of separation between the notes. Um, the Santa Fernandez will, will be will be somewhat different to that. Yeah, um, presumably from, from by making all of these different, um, or being inspired, or, or, or getting orders, or, or, or whichever way it comes around, by, by making these yeah. different models of guitar, um, that also gives you ideas um, to, uh, in your own construction of your own guitars. Yes, yes, it does. I mean, some of it filters through. Um, by osmosis, you know, you're not you're, you're in an unconscious way. You 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 you're finding that, that as time goes on, you you being inspired by a particular sound, and it and it feeds itself into your making, which is which is fine because it's got, you know, if, uh, you you want to be sort of consistent, and you always have your own thumbprint, as it were, you know, of your own sound. People can tell that, um, but then there will be slight changes slight variations of it um as time goes on and that can be just from the influence of other makers um past and present um, yes yeah we'll, we'll do that so um what else so is there anything else interesting on your rack at the moment that uh that, that you oh, yeah, show us yeah 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 there is actually um, um so the um the second guitar you've seen that was the one i showed you with um and we got that. Yeah, that's that's this guitar which I've just shown you. 
Um, yeah. Now this one um, is, is something very new to me. This is uh, this is, again is is based on a Santos Hernandez, mm -hmm. uh, and I I saw that he made one or two guitars out of mahogany. Right. Um, so this is uh, I'll just turn it around. You can see the back. Oh, nice, pretty, yeah. Um, so th this is um, I, I cut this wood myself from um, an old drawing board. Um, um, which uh, somebody gave me, and uh, I think it sort of dated back to the 1960s. And it's got this very beautiful, um, it's got, I call this the redhead, you know, this is my, <laughs> normally, normally they're brunettes, so this yes, is the yes, redhead, actually yes. <laughs> blondes. Um, and um, <clears throat> so I, I'm, I'm in the middle of making this one, just about to put the, the bindings around it. Um, I'm excited by that. I'm looking forward to, to it. Um, I just made it for fun. Yeah, yeah, uh, nice. I, I haven't got a buyer for it yet. Uh, the next one is a cedar top guitar um, right. for, for a customer. Um, now that gives a very different different sound. I can't really demonstrate it. Well, here, actually, I, I, I can because I have a, I have a, a different guitar. Oh, yeah. too, but, but I have oh, a cedar. Right. Mind you, the sounds are not very good, but I have a cedar top here and a, and a spruce top there. But um, okay. it's, 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 right. much a, it's much more of a kind of warmer sound in a sense. It's yeah. not, as, not as kind of fast, if you like, in a way. Yeah, yeah, that's right. There's, it's almost like the notes sort of uh, have, don't separate in the same way <clears throat> as um, spruce, but that has a wonderful quality to it anyway. And I'm, yeah. I'm really excited by that one. Um, and this one is a David Rubio, um, which I have in for repair, some repolishing and yeah. some work for the frets. Um, it's a lovely guitar, 1966, I think, or some something around there. And um, uh, t for our viewers, who who uh, who is David Rubio? Yeah, okay, David Rubio is um, uh, was a maker um, who, um, <clears throat> in terms of um, guitar making I'm sort of direct descendant of because he set up he started in New York mm -hmm. uh, and then moved over to Oxfordshire to a place near Banbury called Duns Chew <clears throat> and that's where he worked with Paul Fisher and a whole yeah. um, group of other um, instrument makers of all sorts of instruments lutes harpsichords guitars um, anything any sort of uh, stringed instruments mm -hmm. um, and then that sort of broke all broke apart and then Rubio went off to Cambridge. But yeah. he's been a you know legendary maker. I mean, you know, he's had um, Breen play his guitars and mm. uh, you know, many, many people. He's, he's very well known. That makes me think actually, um, who is, uh, I mean, for example, in Flamenco, obviously our, our kind of guide, if you like, and, and our, our inspiration perhaps is, uh, well, not perhaps it is, uh, Paco de Lucia, of course, but, but um, <laughs> But for you as a guitar maker, if, if I mean, I'm sure as in as with me too, but there are many, but but um, if you think your kind of model guitar or your inspiration, a guitar maker, who, uh, who would that be? I mean, would it be Torres? Would it be, uh, you know, who, who is who is the kind of thing that you thought, oh, I just just love that, those those guitars, whether they're new or old for that matter? Well, I think probably, um, I mean, Torres is, is, is up there. You know, Torres, is, as you may know, was sort of the originator of really the the modern classical guitar. Yeah. But I, I'm a great fan of Santos Hernandez. I, right. I, I just thought his, his guitar, I mean, as you, as you know, well, he's, he's a, he was a fantastic flamenco uh, maker. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there was just something about the Santos Hernandez guitars that I've seen that I've thought, you know, they really have something special about them. And, and it was very hard to know what <laughs> that's always it, the, yeah the question <laughs> well to, to to that end I, it was the first time I've, I've ever done this i decided to copy a guitar right down to the last detail you know and so I, I got a measuring device which measured the thickness of the top and the back and the sides and everything and so i made one and copied every detail of this um 1929 santos yeah and which um um Miles Roberts from um, Kent Guitar Classics um, well, well, gave me to, to do a restoration on. Well, I, I saw that when in your workshop when I was there, uh, was it when oh, it was yeah. a year or two ago, I can't remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, and so I thought, okay, I, I will sort of take myself out of this and just use the skill that I've got to just copy this as exactly as I can. And I could hardly believe, you know, how, how light, um, yeah the top was and I thought this is this is 
completely alien to what I would be doing, but I carried on with it and it mm. created a sort of wonderful sounding guitar, um, which was not, not my sound. So in, in it, but what it showed me was that what, um, what makes a, a guitar have the sort of signature, the thumbprint of the maker is just really down to experience and his his or her judgment, you know, yes. that is sort of thinking, okay, this is <clears throat> this is how stiff I want the top to be, and this mm -hmm. is how much air I want inside the sound. It's uh, a it's sound. a gift, I, th I think, uh, Chris. It's it's a gift in a way. I mean, I know obviously we have to work at our gifts, but 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 uh, it's a gift to be able to play an instrument. It's a gift to be able to make an instrument. I think, uh, obviously, with experience and time and and all the rest. But I think it's a gift that you have, and and uh, to be able to find that, and obviously. Plus yeah. all the work and all the rest, but but um, but I think that's a beautiful thing, you know, and uh, to, to to find that and to be able to find that and make it uh, is or or make it with the music and it's 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 wonderful. I mean, I'm kind of yeah. blowing my own trumpet, but it, but it, but it's just a nice thing to be able to do, you know. And uh, it's it's yeah. it's difficult to pinpoint exactly what it is that it is, but uh, apart from all the experience. Yeah. But um, but so it brings me on to um, before we finish off to to say um, about. Uh, uh, there are lots of people who play your, your guitars, of course, and, um, and of course I can put some links on uh, to say where they, where, how they can get in contact with you and, and they can look at your website, of course there are people on there. Um, but who, who, who are the main, or one or two of the main guitarists that play your, uh, or play or have played your guitars? Oh, right. Um, um, well, um, currently, um, Laura Snowden is one. I, I, I think he's a wonderful um, player. Um, um, my mind's gone slightly blank. Um, <laughs> I mean, I know there are lots. Uh, I mean, over the years, don't know about Eden Stell, don't they play your guitars? Oh, yeah, Eden, yes. Oh, sorry, yes, uh, them, yeah. Friends of ours, yeah. <laughs> um, yes, yes, Mark Ashford um, uh, from, from the quartet as well. Um, um, uh, name some more, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone who I've been speaking to, funny enough, I don't actually, we haven't met, but Fiona Harrison had one. I just looked at your website, oh, yeah. actually. <laughs> but, uh, but of course, our, our, old, uh, our old friend, uh, Simon Dinnigan, used to have one. In fact, I, I spoke to him the other day and he said that his Christopher Dean was the best guitar he's ever had. Um, oh, and right. actually, and, and you can listen to that guitar online on YouTube, in fact, if you uh, look at yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Google. I'm giving him some free publicity, but anyways. Uh, uh, but um, you'll get your guitars. Yeah, and one or two others. Uh, um, uh, Kevin Lowe, who's, who, right. um, who studied, um, I think, alongside Laura Snowden at the Menuhin School. Right. He's a lovely, a great guitarist. He's a Singapore um, based, although he was, before the lockdown, he was doing um, a music degree in Cambridge. Um, and, um, you know, young, um, there's a young lady I see on YouTube, Alexandra Whittingham. Um, you know, oh, I see the name. Great, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so she's got one. I'm very lucky. It's, it's you know, it's uh, I, yeah. I, I see them out there, and I think that's um, um, that's nice. It, oh, you yeah, know, it's, it, lovely. It, it's lovely for me um, because that's what I want. You know, yes, I want to yeah. hear. I want to hear. It, you know, I do my bit, and then mm. they go out, and then they come to life. Yeah, yeah that's that's yeah. what I love. And I, if I see that, then I'm happy. Well, on, on that, absolutely, me too. So on that note, in fact, um, you know, I, uh, if anyone wants to commission a guitar, they can contact you, obviously, or, or if uh, uh, they simply want to, well, actually, no, you don't, you don't have visitors, but, but, but uh, well, you do when I go around, but, anyways, but, if, but if someone wants to inform, ask about, inquire about uh, uh, guitars or special, special models like the ones of the Santos Hernandez or, or any other ones that you're working on, um, presumably yeah. they can contact you through your website is that, or email, yeah. or I can give the details. And... Um, and they can get in touch with you. And, uh, and likewise, I would like to commission one from you, but uh, we'll have to sort that out between us. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah. but uh, anyways, listen, it's great to catch up with you in these uh, times of lockdown and everything. And, um, yeah. and I wish I, would, you know, I could be there with you and have a cup of tea and biscuits, because I know you have good biscuits. And, uh, <laughs> and listen, um, we'll both get a haircut soon, hopefully. And um, take, <laughs> take care, Chris. And uh, thanks very much. And um, yeah. we shall see you, see you soon, hopefully. Yeah, great speaking to you. Okay. Have a lot of time, Miguel. All right. So.